हेलो एवरी वन आई वेलकम यू ऑन बोर्ड फ्लाइट ऑफ कैटम विजय इन द सीरीज ऑफ फ्लाइट टू स्टडी मीटरोलॉजी फॉर डी जी सी सी पी एल एंड ए टी पी एल एग्जामिनेशन टूडे वील फ्लाई थ्रू द टॉपिक ऑफ अपर विंड्स एंड जेट स्ट्रीम्स सो फासन सीट बेल्ट एज वी आर रेडी फॉर टेक ऑफ फॉर बेटर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ दिस टॉपिक यू नीड टू फर्स्ट वॉच द प्रीवियस वीडियो लेसन नेम्ड ग्लोबल प्रेशर पैटर्न इफ यू हैव नॉट सीन इट I suggest you watch that before watching this video. If we have to classify winds as per altitude, then there would emerge as three category of winds. That is, surface winds below three thousand feet, which is below friction layer. Then low level winds starting from three thousand feet up to below tropopause, and upper winds near and above tropopause. Surface winds has the same origin as geostrophic or gradient winds of low level but they are modified in terms of direction and speed due to terrain man-made obstructions mountain valleys seashore etc the upper winds blow near tropopause and are also governed by pressure gradient force and coriolis force few things which are different for upper winds as compared to lower level of winds are as follows first is that the upper winds are much stronger as compared to lower level winds the reason for this is as we go up the density reduces hence the friction force reduces so for the same pressure gradient wind speed will be higher at 20000 feet the wind speed will be double and at 40000 feet it will be four times second point is that at lower levels we have northerly or southerly component of the wind direction but upper winds will be either easterly or westerly only two directions this happens since higher the wind speed higher will be coriolis force and higher coriolis force will curve the wind through 90 degree to make it westerly or easterly so if you are flying at high altitude while flying north or south you will have significant drift and while flying east or west you will get significant change in your ground speed due to strong winds upper winds are winds near and above tropopause it can be considered to be between a height band of 8 to 16 km the reason being that the tropopause is at 8 to 10 km over poles and 16 to 18 km over equator Now let's discuss why upper winds blow. The only universal reason for winds to blow is difference in pressure. Wind blows from high to low pressure area. But if sea level pressure is same across the globe and pressure lapse rate remains the same, then there will be no change in pressure between two regions on earth at any height. So what causes this pressure change? Well, the different temperature profiles of air masses in different regions create this pressure variation at a given height above earth if temperature drops atmospheric pressure also drops and if temperature rises atmospheric pressure also rises so change in horizontal temperature profile gives rise to pressure variation and creates pressure gradient force to generate the wind that is why upper winds are also called thermal winds Now to understand this phenomena initially imagine that the sea level pressure is same over the entire planet and that is 1013.25 millibar if pressure lapse rate was constant across the globe then at a given height you will have the same atmospheric pressure between two points which will generate no pressure gradient force and hence there would be nil winds but the temperature profile in the atmosphere is not the same differential heating of earth by sun creates different temperature profiles over the planet earth so when it is cold the pressure levels contract they get closely spaced with each other and when it is hot pressure levels expand they stretch out from each other now you notice that at a given height pressure is higher where temperature is higher and pressure is lower where temperature is lower or it is colder hence a pressure gradient force is created which makes the wind blow from high temperature area to low temperature area as in case of low level winds upper winds also curve to the right in northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere so bybelot's law can be inter interpreted as 
if an observer is standing in northern hemisphere with his back towards the wind then the low pressure area which is also called or which can also be called as cold area will be on his left and reverse will be the case in southern hemisphere upper winds are westerlies across the entire globe in both northern and southern hemisphere except in tropical areas where we get seasonal easterlies upper level winds this can be explained by looking at the inclination of sun with respect to equator in march and september sun is directly over equator hence equator gets maximum heating but in june thermal equator would be at 23.5 degree north that is at tropic of over tro tropic of cancer the wind would blow from here towards the equator from high temperature area to low temperature area and being in northern hemisphere curve to the right under coriolis force making it easterly wind similar situation will happen in december in southern hemisphere when sun is over tropic of capricorn now we will discuss about the mysterious jet streams jet streams are strong currents of air that circle the entire globe at a height of 10 to 15 km near tropopause jet streams have a minimum of 60 knots of wind speed 100 to 200 knots are common and it can get as high as 300 knots occasionally on an average jet streams are 2000 miles long 200 miles wide and 2 miles deep speed is maximum at its core and as we move away from center of core area speed reduces as we know upper level winds are thermal winds which blow due to change in temperature of air masses at a given height and if you recollect from the first video lesson on atmosphere there are two locations on the globe where there is a break in tropopause that is height of tropopause abruptly changes and these latitudes are 40 degree and 60 degree so at these two locations in north and south hemisphere the thermal gradient near the height of tropopause is maximum resulting in a very large pressure gradient force and hence very high speed winds wind speed of jet streams are highest in winter since temperature contrast will be maximum in winter on the basis of location of these jet streams on the globe one near 40 degree latitude is named as subtropical jet stream and one at 60 degree latitude is called polar front jet streams these two jet streams are permanent jet streams which blow throughout the year but the mean latitude changes with movement of sun over earth Subtropical jet streams are westerly winds at a height of 12 km which occurs in the latitude band of 25 to 40 degree in winter and 40 to 45 degree in summer. So the jet stream location in terms of latitude is shifting north in summer and south in winter. So it is simply following the movement of sun across the equator. Sun moves north in summer, south in winter and so does the jet stream. So in summers Subtropical jet stream is at 40 to 45 degree north which is beyond the Indian continent but in winters it is at 25 to 40 degree so if you see indian map with latitude you can notice that from october to may which is a non monsoon period we get jet streams giving a speed of 100 to 200 knots above central india and foothills of himalayas the mean speed is 100 knots Wind speed is lowest in October and May about 60 knots and highest in January 120 knots and occasionally going to 200 knots. The maximum wind speed is just below the tropopause. And during these months from October to May if you are flying in the central or northern India you must consider the presence of jet streams in your flight plan. If you are flying east it will be a great help to reduce flying time and fuel consumption but if you are flying west then it's better to avoid the height of height band of jet streams Next is polar front jet streams these are westerly winds located at approximate height of 9 km with wind speed of 80 to 100 knots The ideal location for this is 60 degree north and south but with the movement of sun it moves to 70 degree north in summers 
and 40 degree north in winters. Apart from the permanent presence of subtropical and polar front jet streams, we have a temporary jet stream also in the tropical zone which is called tropical easterly jet streams. As the name suggests, it occurs in the tropical area, flows from east to west, that is easterly wind. Tropical jet stream is easterly. The reason for easterly wind in tropic in summer we have already discussed and understood. The temperature contrast required for jet stream for this tropical easterly jet stream is due to intense heating of Tibetan plateau in summer. Tropical easterly jet stream and its location is about 13 degree north latitude which goes over Chennai at a height of 15 to 16 km. Tropical easterly jet stream extends from Southeast Asia to Africa. So hope this video has helped you in understanding the topic of upper winds and jet streams. With this we have arrived at our destination. Subscribe the channel for more such informative videos on aviation. Do not forget to comment below about how did you like the video or if you want me to cover some specific topic. Hope to see you on board again for the next flight and till then happy landings.